Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field report. For the first time that I can remember, more of our customers' corn will not be knee-high by the 4th than over knee-high. Some of these fields, the only way it's going to be over knee-high by the 4th is going to be that you're kneeling down when you're looking at it. I've been calling around to the retailers to see <clears throat> how much of their customer base has taken preventive planting. Now these dealers know because this is lost revenue for them and they don't have insurance for it. Talked with a local insurance agent. He said right now the state is plugged in at 15% preventive plant on corn. Now most of these acres are in the north on that Interstate 80 corridor. Here at Hayworth, the estimates were 3 to 5% preventive plant. Over at Sun Ag, Tazewell County, um, about 1% to 2% preventive plant. Talk with Fred at Donovan Co-op over there at Donovan, Illinois, on the Indiana border. He thinks 5 to 10% preventive plant. Talking with Jeff at Trainer Grain there in Livingston County, he says to the south of his territory, 3 to 5%, but north and east it gets as high as 20 to 30% preventive plant. Talk with Jason up at Helena plant there at uh, Grand Ridge. He thinks locally it's about 10%, but when you get north up to the DeKalb plant, it's closer to 50%. And talking with Jeff at Ritchie Grain there in Wilmington, he believes their customer base is somewhere in that 50 to 60% preventive plant. And that goes from Wilmington down towards Dwight. Move north and east of Wilmington, it climbs to 80% preventive plant. So many areas continue to fight the wet weather. Grow reports coming in from Decatur South. Some areas got from 5 to 8 inches this week. Reports of 2.5 to 3 inches in 20 minutes in some cases. Fred at Donovan Co-op reported a half to 3.5 inches in his area last night. And areas to the east into Indiana 4 to 7 inches. These are large amounts of rain on already wet soil. And this is a problem for the low-lying areas where all this water is going to run to. One grower said his replanted ponds are up and looking good, but now they're underwater. He said it's been underwater for three days and wondering if it'll make it. Mm. Unfortunately, in this heat, if it goes underwater for 48 hours, it's going to be pretty rough. Three days, it's probably gone. Under cooler conditions, I've seen it survive a week. Do expect this corn that went underwater, if it survives, you're going to see some crazy top this fall. In these wet areas, a lot of corn and beans have taken on a yellow cast. Growers are concerned about nitrogen loss. With the soil already wet and at the rate these rains came, the infiltration is actually not much at all, meaning most of it ran off. We had some growers retest areas to see how much nitrates changed from the previous week to this wet week. And actually in nitrates, there's been very little change, meaning it wasn't that hard on the nitrates. Most of the yellow corn that you're seeing out there is just lack of oxygen. Color will come back as we evaporate some of this water, get the oxygen back in the soil. These wet conditions have also caused the high pH low ground to show iron chlorosis in the beans. Growers have been asking, should we try to foliar feed these beans, get them back green? Mm, that's an option. But a lot of these beans are so small that most of that product's going to hit the ground and not be of much value. I believe I would just wait for drier weather. Now some of these beans are off color because of the carbon penalty, and they'll green up when they get to that B4 stage. Visiting some fields this week, we have some weed issues. The worst of them, of course, is in the non-GMO fields, especially the ones where no fall burn downs were applied and we took the 2,4-D out of the burn down. With these fields, we have some with foot-tall mare's tail that weren't uh, burnt down the first time. Or if they did get burned down, they came back. They survived it. These beans, some of them are pretty good size. The only way to slow down or stop a foot tall's mare's tail in non-GMO field is to hit her with a hot load. Unfortunately, we'll probably burn these beans to the ground trying to burn down that 
big mare's tail. Being that it's July, I would be careful when it comes to burning, uh, burning these beans hard at this point if you can help it. And to be honest, trying to take out a foot tall mare's tail in non-GMO beans with the herbicide is probably unrealistic. Be sure to watch the replanting intervals on the products that you're using uh, out here in the post site, especially on these small beans. Most of the product you're spraying is going to hit the ground and not leaf tissue. We do not want to deal with carryover issues next year, so let's start paying attention to that. I can sure pick out the non-GMO fields that got fall burn down on them. They look a lot better. This is why we need to start clean and stay clean in these fields. Now, the reason for this problem is weather. It went against us, and that happens. And when that does happen, you have to react. One of my suggestions for some of these fields is a row crop cultivator. I know, it's not exciting, but it works. For you young uh, Roundup babies in the audience, you may have to Google row crop cultivator if you don't know what it is. When you have a picture of it, take it to dad or grandpa and ask him if he has one of those. And if so, what fence or old barn did it get parked in? You'll probably find it next to the rotary hoe, another tool we haven't used for decades. The other option is to walk these beans. So when you're Googling row crop cultivator, Google bean hook too, that's an option. I know they still sell bean hooks. We bought some last year and showed our interns how to walk beans here at the Corn College campus. I told them if they put walking beans on their resume, if the person looking at it knows what bean walking is, their resume will go to the top of the pile. <laughs> I think they believe me. In some areas, weed harvest will start next week or the week after. Some growers have called concerned about dawn and the wheat, uh, whether it's going to be an issue or not. I suspect it probably will be in some fields, especially those that didn't get a fungicide. The question came in, can I use uh, this weed if it's got dawn in it for cover crop on the prevented plant takers? The answer here is yes, we've done that before. I would do like the guys are doing that are planting the bin run oats. I'd put them through a, a seed cleaner, get somebody to clean them up for you. I suspect that you guys that have good wheat may make more selling it as a cover crop uh, based on the amount of preventive plant there is right now than actual grain. Number of calls on putting preventive plant acres to forage to cover um, feed for the livestock. I think this is a good idea, especially if you have livestock to feed. I'm guessing it'll be cheaper than buying expensive grain this fall. When it comes to forage covers, there are a lot of options. I would recommend meeting with your seed suppliers uh, to come up with an option for your farm. I suspect seed supplies are going to get tight fairly quick. Now, uh, Jim Mift and the guys at Pro Harvest have sent me some of their picks um, for these acres. I can send them to you, but I think it's best that you talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, everyone's situation is a little bit different. Anybody who has a drill or an air seeder wanting custom work, make it new one. I think you'll be busy. If you are going the forage cover crop route, but make sure you have a market. Don't just assume you're going to be able to sell it because I think forage silage is going to be uh, something that there's going to be a lot of. You do not want 60 to 80 inch tall Sudan grass out there and don't have a market uh, to get rid of it. So be sure you have it nailed down. If you're not going to feed it, who's the buyer and make those terms ahead of time. Don't just wing it thinking you're going to come out of that. For the pest team, the rootworms are feeding now. If you want to do your rootworm floats and document pressure, I suspect some areas we've drowned these little boogers based on the amount of rain that we've had. Those of you new to floating for rootworm, we take a seven inch cube of soil around the base of the plant, three and a half inches out all the way around, seven inches deep. We put that plant soil and all in a half uh, bucket full of water, of salt water that is. We wash the roots clean. Uh, the rootworm will float in the salt water and they'll come to the top for you to count them. Eight or more in a seven inch cube is what we use as a threshold indicating we got problems. If any pest team finds fields above thresholds, I'd like to know. I'd like to try some rescue treatments with a Y drop to see if we can make a difference. With warm temperatures in the forecast, uh, we'll see some of these fields really take off. 
I looked this morning as of May 1st, we are about 340 GDUs behind last year. So cranking up the daily GDUs will be a good thing. But when the temperatures get into the 90s on this small corn, you're going to see some rolling. This corn doesn't have a big enough root system to handle 90 degree heat for very long without rolling. It's not that we're out of water, it's just too high of an evapotranspiration rate for these small root systems. Fields with severe compaction will take it harder. For the most part, corn is just protecting itself. Corn over knee high can handle this without too much detriment. Some of the real small corn in that V4, V6 range could give up rows around if it's what we call a G hybrid, one of those that gives up girth when it's stressed. The bigger this crop gets, the more heat it can handle. Sign up for the Farm Journal Corn Soybean College is coming in at a good pace. And again, we thank you for that. We have attendees now from 16 states and Canada so far. The event has been approved for 13 CEU credits for the, all the CCAs. We are making some minor changes to content as I talk. Attendees are asking, will we cover anything on preventive plant acres? Well, fortunately, here at the campus, we don't have any preventive plant issues, uh, but we do have cover crops, and we planted into those cover crops. So we will be blending in some material on how to handle planting in cover crops, as well as nutrient management on your preventive acres uh, when it goes back to crop for next year. Realizing some of the guys will be planting covers for the first time. Our crews continue to look for every acre they can find dry enough to sample. So we do appreciate, again, your help and patience in this matter. To stay up to date, check out our website at croptechinc.com and subscribe to our podcast, Boots in the Field Report. Keep her safe, keep her moving.